Hello ladies, I hope you're well. My name is Katie if you've not met me before and I'm from Katie Style. I'm an image consultant and I am practicing in my studio and on Zoom virtually from Kent in England. So today I want to run you through some makeup tips. The reason I want to talk about makeup is it makes such a big impact whether we wear a little bit or a lot. So it's really important that we're wearing the right shades for us. And I'm not just talking about the colour of your foundation, I'm talking about the colour of your eyeliner, the colour of your mascara, your lip and cheek colour, even your eyeshadow colours, and even the brow pencil you may be using. So once we know what the colours are, once I've prescribed the best shades of, to you based on your dominant colour, then you can go off and explore and play with your style personality. So whether or not you want to go something really natural or if you're a bit more romantic and like it a little bit pretty and a bit of sparkle and shimmer, or maybe you're a bit of a creative like me and you like to go for a full on lip color and nice bold eyes. All those things don't matter as long as we've got the right colors. The other thing I want to talk to you today about is applying and some simple techniques to really lift your look. You know, if we're hitting certain ages, uh, where we feel like things are changing and we're not happy with how we look instead of reaching for the needle we can give ourselves a couple of little trompe l'oeil effects and lift our face and, and lift our features with some simple techniques so I'm going to try and do half my face in the wrong colour slapping the makeup on in a way we might if we're rushing out um, and then compare that to doing it in the right colour on the other side of the face and putting it in a better place than it was before I'll be using a mixture of Zayo makeup, which is all completely eco-friendly, vegan, refillable, recyclable makeup, um, and Mary Kay, which I love. I love the colour, I love the company, I love the products. So I've already started with a really simple base. We're not going for big dramatic looks today. I always make sure, first of all, you've got a really good skincare routine. Drinking lots of water, keep the skin hydrated is the top tip for good makeup. Start with a good base. Then we're going to start with a primer. So this one here is Mary Kay Foundation Primer. It comes out in kind of, <coughs> excuse me, it comes out in a bit of a, a clear gel. I don't know how easy you can see that. Can you see on my finger that sort of clear gel and it's very smooth. It creates a really good base for your makeup to go on. So if you've got, for example, I've got quite a lot of pores on my nose, you might have some fine lines, you might have dry skin, you might have oily skin. This helps to prep the face and create a barrier to help your makeup last longer, to help the makeup you put on sit well. Um, and sometimes help the colour pop as well. Then, just for every day, but actually sometimes in the evening, if my skin's in good condition, I'm using a CC cream. CC and BB creams are moisturising tinted foundations. They're all the same thing. This gives you a light coverage. So I've only done this so far, and I have a little bit of darkness here, and I know I've got a few blemishes around here. So I'm going to combat that today with my concealers and my under eye corrector. That's the first thing I want to talk about. You can go from medium coverage. Um, we do a medium coverage for oily skin or dry skin. Um, and then if you wanted a full coverage, that tends to be the sort of thing you'd use on photo shoots. Uh, it's quite thick and heavy. So if you need more than CC cream, look for a medium coverage. And that's something I can talk to you about if you need help. But moving on, right, so I've got a couple of products. This is a really old product when I used to work with a company called Colour Me Beautiful, and you can still get these on their website, but you can get all sorts of similar things. Colour correctors. This one is almost empty. This is a yellow, let me see if I can show you. Yellow combats dark circles and age spots, ladies. So if you've got any age spots, you want that lightness of a CC cream, but you need to sort of combat a couple of problem areas. Yellow always combats what we class as purple because it's opposite on the colour wheel. We class the, the dark circles as purple, the yellow, if you mix the two together on a colour wheel with paint, you get brown. So everything opposite goes brown. Brown is neutral or skin colour, if you like. So if you have red blemishes, you want green. If you look at colour wheel, green is opposite on the colour wheel. So top tip there, if you're going to purchase colour correctors. Colour Me Beautiful do this in green and yellow. I know a consultant who can supply you with that. If you need some help, let me know. But. The other thing I've got is, which one do I want to show you first? I've got these look the same. One's a concealer and one's an under eye corrector. Under eye corrector with a pink pigmentation, which also can help. So again, I should have done one than the other, shouldn't I? This one's a little bit heavier than the, the Colour Me Beautiful Yellow and it gives a better coverage. So I'm not trying to highlight, I'm just, there you go. You can see the difference under the eyes there. So I will go in and do this side to make it fair when we're looking at the difference colour can make start with this, the same base on both sides of the face before we start playing and changing things up. So there you can see the difference that that has made the under eye corrector 
that's one of my go-tos and then I always pop the excess if I feel I've got too much just pop it on the lid to help neutralize the color on the lid if that helps if that's what you want to do then go in with the concealer anywhere I feel I might have a few blemishes I have sensitive skin I've been trying new skincare products and inevitably they've made me come out in a little bit of a blotchy red rash sun cream can do that to me too sun cream's key ladies sun cream not in your skin in your foundation although these have got it but getting hold of one of the ladies in the group who sells tropics sorry i can't remember who it is at the moment i think fiona does as well but the fpf factor 50 from any of the ladies in the group that sell tropics is one of my favorite products at the moment i'm sitting in my bedroom at the moment so if i've got it here i can show you no it's not there to hand so but yeah i'm sure one of the ladies could show you maybe pop it in the comments below um so that's my base done i'm really happy with that if i wanted a little bit of powder i could um powders are great for setting foundation but i know as we get old we get slightly drier skin in some cases so you might feel a bit scared of using it this one here, everything in bamboo, is from Zayo. Everything's made in bamboo because it grows like a weed. It's a brilliant material. Uh, it's got magnet top and then the powder's in there. This one here is a good coverage. It could be used on its own if you're really not a makeup person and you just like to put a bit of powder on. Um, but I actually like that extra bit of coverage on top if I feel like I'm really blemishy. Blemishy, is that a word? So there you go. Really good one, that one. Comes in lots of different colours. You might just want a translucent powder as well, which is fine. Translucent is really light. It goes on any colour skin, whereas products like that last one come in different colours for different colour skins. And both the products I use come with a really good range of skin tones. So if you struggle with skin tones, let me know. So next up, let's move on and have some fun. I'm going to start with my eyes. I'm going to start with my eyeshadow. So eyeshadows the tools tools are the best bit of advice i can give you i think i've said this before in previous sessions um, and i really need to follow up for you these brushes here in pink if you see me pick any up these are from a company called spectrum they're not really expensive they're not really cheap look out for deals on welter and so on spectrum are great and i managed to go to a show and get a really good deal and pick up loads and loads of bits uh, for 25 pounds in a bag so I've got lots, of, there's lots more than this, there's loads more, but you can see there's all different shapes and angles and they really do make a difference when we're applying our makeup to how well that we, we apply our eyeshadows or blushes. <clears throat> so I'm going to take this flat ended one because that's going to help blend my eyeliner later. I'm going to take a nice fluffy one to start with, clear that up a bit. I want, I might go for this angled one here it's a fluffy angled one um and then i've got a couple of others here i bought a selection from boots once which had a couple that i quite liked these were called masqd can't pronounce that that's another round-headed one and then look can you see i've got an even smaller round-headed one here so i'm sure i might have forgotten something but let's get started i can always add it in a bit so lots of different options, colour wise. I'm probably gonna stick with my Mary Kay because I know I've got a warm and cool to hand, but then I'll show you after my Zayo collection. So if you're extra sensitive or really into your eco-friendly makeup, you can have a look at that. But this is really good stuff too. <coughs> Excuse me, it's hot and I'm getting a bit of a cough. Right, so eyeshadow palette one in the right colours. I want the one with the wrong colours to start with. Here you go. So the options are buying different magnetic palettes in different sizes and filling them. And it's great because it means when you run out of your favourite eyeshadow or your most regularly used one, you don't have to go and buy a whole new palette, which let's face it, no one buys a whole new palette when you've only run out of one or two. We just stop using it and it sits there for ages. But you can replace these. So when you use the light ones, which get used all the time, just pull them out, buy a new one and stick it in. So here I have a warm palette, so we're gonna start with this. The first shade is quite a good neutral. I think it's biscotti, and I think I'd use that on pretty much anyone. I'm gonna take my biggest brush, and I'm gonna blend it all the way over the eyelid, like so. At this point, you can be a little bit haphazard if, you, if, you, if you're in a rush, 
and just chuck it all on. Make sure you come in here, this light in this area up here. And I'll, I'll prep myself on the other side for later at this point. Take it all the way up to the brow bone. Now, in some videos, you might see them just take this colour up here because it's highlighting the brow bone and helping it stand out, which is a great way of lifting the eye. And then here to open up the eye. I like to apply all over because I call this my transition or base. It's easier to blend eyeshadow on top of eyeshadow. So that's why I do it. Next up, I'm going to take, I think this one's called Moonstone here, and it's a, a sort of a goldy shimmer. And I'm now coming down to my angled brush, which is just a little, it's still fluffy, but it's a bit smaller. So it can go into this area. I'm going to pop it on my eye lid. So this is always the next darkest shade. Still really light shade, but it's a little bit darker. And this one's got shimmer, as I said, and we're bringing that back into the corner. And at this point, I don't know how easy it's to see, but it doesn't matter too much. So we're going for a real natural look today. Um, now I'm going down to the smallest brush and I'm going to go for ooh, this one here, which is, I think this one's hazelnut. It's a really nice warm chocolatey brown. Now at this stage, it's not the most horrendous colour on me, but I am better in a cooler shade. So if you are warm, you're better in your golds and chocolates, creamy tones. I've taken the small one, I'm going to tap off the excess and then I need to get myself a mirror so I can see a bit closer. Now, at this point, I want to apply it wrong uh, to show you the difference. So, I'm going to pop it on half the lid, which is probably going to close my eye up. Oh, let's go back into the right palette to a bit more. So I've kept it on my lid, which is not doing me any justice. And then I'm going to take it up a little bit and bring it out here as if I was trying to widen the eye out. There you go. You see that? It's not really doing me any favours, is it? It's natural, but it's not sitting in the best place. You might be you might be someone who likes to blend, but try and blend it out a bit, take an empty brush and just blend the two. There you go. Then I'm gonna take a eyebrow brush. I call it an eyebrow brush. So this one is really short, stubby and angled. Okay, this is an old unique brush. I like it, I love this brush, um, double, double ended. So then I'm gonna take that same color and because I'm a blonde, um, but it should be a cool brown. And I'm gonna take this and I'm going to draw it my eyebrow. So I'm gonna work it on like this. All the way up to here, make it really dark, and I'm not going to blend it out. There you go. Next. Next up, I didn't plan for this, I've just thought it. Um, I'm going to put on a colour eyeliner that many of us use, and it is the worst colour we can use. Any guesses? Let's see if I can find one. Oh, close enough. Black. So many of us are wearing black mascara and black eyeliner. And I think it's just easy go-to, but actually only a small percent of ladies, once they've had their colours done, get recommended with a black. Do you know what? I don't even think I own a black. Let's have a quick look. Oh, I think I do. Here you go. Yep, I've got lovely, lovely, thick, creamy black. So if I, the only time this ever really gets any use is probably Halloween. So here we go. We're going to pop that eyeliner, eyeliner on and we're going to put it on the bottom. Hands up if you're putting it in the waterline. I don't think I can bring myself to do it. But if you're popping it in here like this, you're going to be closing the eye up, okay? So you've popped your eyeliner on, all done. And then you want to pop your mascara on, which I do believe I do have black. I do. This was one of those Christmas hamper things from Marks and Spencers, and it came with a black mascara. It's a lovely mascara, it's just the wrong color. So, does this look like your makeup routine? Are you brave enough to comment yes? Do you wear black mascara and black eyeliner? There you go. I can already tell from colour analysis point of view that this has made me look more tired under this eye because I'm using black. 
So let's move on. Shall we compare with the other eye? So let's move all this black out of the way. Let's close up this gorgeous warm. See, we've got a gold here as well. Um, I could, would I use another? No, we'll leave it at that for now. I can add that in at the end if you want and have a play. And let's move over to the bigger palette, which I do use every day, which is why it's a bit of a mess. And this one here is all cool shades. So I've got a brown, but it's like a, a pewter or a stone. So it's kind of a grey colour. I've got, a, a, there was a gold shimmer in there. There's a sort of pewter shimmer here. And then mine is moon, one's moonstone, one's moonstone and one's, oh, I can't remember. No, nope, can't remember. It'll come to me. Quartz or something. This is a more silvery shimmer and the same base which you know I've already used so let's have these brushes a little clear up so I don't contaminate with the color and let's start looking at how best to apply these colors so I'm going to take my light shimmer which I think is moonstone which is almost running out tap that off and I'm going to place that all over the lid same as I did before that's fine if you get any fallout on the cheek, you don't normally, this one's just a bit old so it's starting to crumble a little bit. You just grab a brush and brush it off. Or use a hairdryer on a cold setting and just blast it off the face. Next up, I'm going to take that round brush again. Now this is where the technique comes and makes a big difference. On the third brown, the third colour, the brown colour, which we call the crease colour, I'm just loading the brush up, tapping it off, making sure I can see. So what I want to do is instead of popping the dark colour on the lid and closing my eye up, I want to leave the lid as light as possible and I want to bring in a shadow here, which you know we've naturally got one. And if you're hooded, you can still do this. Keep it above this line, keep the lid light and just put a splash of colour in a bit of a banana shape here. So let's go ahead and show you. If you're looking straight on in the mirror, you no more than halfway and you can bring it down a little bit here. The other thing is, is I'm not trying to bring it out like I was before, I'm bringing it more in straight line down, keeping everything up so this space stays clear, which is going to give the effect of lifting. Now once that colour's there, you can then go back to your big fluffy brush and you want to blend it. You don't want to see a harsh line like we did before. Look, you can see the line between the light and the dark there. You want to keep things blended by circle motions back and forth. Take the brush that you put the light colour on first, or an empty fluffy one, and just go over that line with the two meat to really soften it up and blend it out. And this all comes with practice. It doesn't take a lot. But already, look how closed and tired that looks and how lifted and light this side looks. So that's my eyeshadow done. It's given me all my strength not to put lots of big heavy colour on here, ladies. Those who know me know that I'm a dramatic, so I like to take, take it a bit further. So, before we move on to a coloured eyeliner for everyone, I'll talk about everyone's coloured eyeliners um, and put one on me, I actually want to talk about this. This is a, not a white, but a cream. Now some of you might remember being told in the past that using a white on the uh, waterline really helps open your eye, and it does. But when we hit our 30s and onwards, white can be a bit harsh depending on, on your colour type. And so this more creamy nude colour is, is better. So we're going to take it and just colour in here and instead of adding a dark colour we're going to add a light colour and lift and open up the eye. It tickles a little bit but it's, it's not too bad and it's quite easy to do. There you go. So really opening up that eye. If you've got really big eyes, if you describe your own eyes as goggly then adding something different and darker inside the waterline will work for you. But again, I'd still urge you to go for a different colour. So let's have a quick look at colour options we've got. Let's have a look at the Zayo ones because they're easy to get to hand. Any questions, pop them below, whether you're on YouTube or within the group, um, then I can get back to you and answer any questions you have. So, eyeliner colours. So many choices uh, beyond the two different brands. The first are, you've got brown and dark brown and light brown, 
um, with Zayo. So whatever works for you. If you're warm, if you're deep, you're going to want a brown like this. If you're lighter or softer and smoky, maybe you're going to, and cooler, you're going to want some of these more taupey shades. So from the chocolate browns for the warms down to the taupey colours, um, you can see here the difference we've got. These are the sample testers. I can pop some on my hand next to the black because I actually drew black on my hand earlier just before I popped it on myself. Some of these are eyebrow colours as well, eyebrow pencils, but if it says eyebrow, that's fine. It can be used, they can both be used for each. So you can see all the way from the black through to the lights, perfect for our blondes as well. Next up, the one I'm going to use on myself in a minute, oh, is I'm going to use a grey. Now I've got a grey, or am I? No, I'm not. I'm going to try something else. Right, so... If you're cool and you're smoky and you're light, grey is a really good one. Um, I'll see if I can pop a tester on for you in a second. That's actually a stock one. <clears throat> and then blue. Don't freak out, ladies. This one's quite a bright one. I'll see if I can find my other one in a minute. But you can see here we've got kind of a nice deep inky blue here, which is going to be great on our cools, our dips, our lights if they're dramatic. I like wearing this one. It's beautiful. Helps the eye pop. Um, then we've got this one, which is my go-to. If you see me on a work stall, on a on a, a show, if you've had a one-to-one -one with me, you know I always try and share with you the teal. It's a cheap colour because it suits everyone. It sits right in between warm and cool. It's not too dark, it's not too light. So it is a colour I could show you today. And it really makes your eyes ping. The colour of your eye would always sparkle. Just before I go ahead and pop that one on, I can show you a couple more. This is the, or oh, I haven't got as many. I'll do something on my page. So this is a, a, another, that's the grey. So you can see it's not as dark as the black, but that's the grey there. So there we have it. Let me go in with the teal from the Zaya and show you the difference it makes and how I apply it. I'm not just gonna chuck it on this time. I'm gonna use a brush to help. So, <clears throat> first of all, if you're nervous about doing eyeliner, don't worry. Pop a tiny, tiny dash in the corner there. And don't worry if you've made a mess of it. Next, you're going to do the same on the top. I come in close here. You're going to tickle the lashes because it means you're as close to the lash line as you can be. You don't want a gap. And just tickle back and forth. So nice, soft pencils, both the Mary Kay and the Zayo. And then even if you've gone wiggly wobbly, don't worry, because you're going to get a flat ended brush, which I had. Where have I popped that? You want a flat angled brush to help. You could do it with your fingers if your fingers are clean. So you see you've got something that's got a bit of a flat edge. And then you're just going to tickle and smudge the line. Because by smudging it, you're softening it. So it's not a harsh line. You're filling any gaps and straightening up what you've already put on. If you want to do a flick, you can at this point, but a little flick and keep it quite high. I'm not going to worry too much about a flick right now. But can you see the difference in this eye and this eye? It's the application, but it's the colour as well. Now, let's do the eyebrow. So I'll get that brush I used before. Let's dust off that dark chocolatey brown. I'm going to use the same brush but show you how I put it on a little bit more caringly if you like. So the brown that we used before here, oh that one, tap it on the brush and I want to apply it in a way that's going to lift my eyebrows. So you hear about people saying that eyebrows frame the face, they really do but let's frame it and lift it. So make sure they're brushed up, mine could do with a tweeze or a thread right now but it's as good as we got so I'm going to take that angle brush and I'm going to follow the top line up to the arch and bring it down. It's just practice and then the excess is going to come here lightly and then to top it off I'm going to take a spoolie or an eyebrow brush and just brush through to lighten it and soften it. It doesn't have to be harsh, it's not that difficult, you follow the brow line that you've already got and can you see instead of having a heavy brow that weighs me down I've got a brow that's up and lifted my eye. Next up, I'm going to go for a mascara that is black brown. 
not black because it's going to make a difference now if you are cool deep and cool light smoky pretty much anything except for warm or really warm then blue black and navy is going to look fab on you a really good option if you're not sure is always go for black brown if you're deep and cool you can wear black but still try some of these other shades they are so much better and so much prettier now i'm using brown with the teal eyeliner that's absolutely fine the teal eyeliner looks great with the blue if it suits you there you go look the difference that's made right so i'm babbling on i want to move on and keep it short now because i don't want to keep it too much longer and I want to see if I can show you the difference between the warm blush and the cool blush. So let's see if I can find myself the Zayo, the Zayo palette. So this is the one I use in my studio. It holds a whole load of colours to play with and it has a couple of blushes. Really I want a smaller brush, a blush a brush. And I'm sure it's sitting here right in front of me but I can't see it for looking. So here you can see the difference. Cool shades typically are berries, candies, rose pinks uh, and warmer shades are typically corals salmons apricots the orangey tone versus the pinky purpley tone so you've got your warm and your cool i'm gonna go in with the orange and i'm gonna do what i'm sure many of us do and that's whack it on okay might take it up on your forehead it's a bit like a bronzer color Bit underneath because that's what we're told to do um, and there you go I'll be sure to get some photos of this after as well so you can have a good look now I'm going to change my brush to a smaller brush so I've got a bit more control a bit more direction and I'm going to go in with the light pink which is the right color for me and I'm going to take it just here just a tiny bit so if we put a face this is where your bronzer would go if you really want to add some dark colour to add to that contour. It's when you make that face and you see the den and that's where the shadow should go. About here. <clears throat> Don't bring it down too low. Anything you bring low is going to make your face low. So always just inch it up a little bit. So my blusher is coming just here up to my hairline in a tiny little circle motion in the right colour. Um, and then again if it was a bronzer I could do this but sometimes I do it with my blusher instead just to add a little bit of colour in especially once we put our foundation and we're taking colour out of the face then I'm going to go for a highlighter highlighter could be a powder highlighter it could be a cream one I'm using at the moment this Mary Kay one which comes in a cool and a warm this is the cool one so different tones um, and I'm going to take a little bit on my finger and then Instead of doing what we would normally do and just chucking it on like this, bring it down, I'm going to just pop it here where the light hits gently. As I say, it's going to be a powder. The shimmer doesn't always show up on the camera as well, but trust me, this will be up high like this, not all down and over like this. Okay? You can pop a little bit on the lip, that's going to help in a minute if you want slightly bigger lip. And I really want to hurry up and finish, I don't want to keep it too much longer. So I'm going to put a little bit of shimmer there so it hits the top of my lip. And then we're going to go in with lip liner. So, warm lip liner versus cool. Let's go for warm and dark, which I know is no good. Now, always, always colouring the whole lip. Because it helps the lipstick stay on top. These Zayo ones are waxy from a plant-based wax. You can keep it like this for a natural matte finish, which is going to last well. Or you can pop a lippy on top. So that one was perfect for a deep and a warm that's 561 or a soft uh, warm and deep. And then I'm going in here. There's a colour which I know suits me better. A natural light pinky tone. Finish it off with a little bit of gloss, if I can find some, and we will be done. 
you can really see the range of lip colours that we have here, just from, oh look what we've got here. So you can see here, so many lipsticks. I've got old lipsticks, new lipsticks, Zayo and um, Mary Kay. And this is me organising, oh we've got a helicopter. This is me organising all the different colours and all the shades so I know exactly what to share with you. So let's go for this one here, which I know is warm. Actually quite a natural colour on the white lady, but it looks quite dark on me. Compared to, so that was 467, compared to 462, which is a nice light pink. And there you go. Right. In order to really see the full effect, I will take some photos and pop them in the group or in a newsletter. Um, let me see if I can get a picture, piece of paper. We've got a book, here you go. Right, you ready? This side, how does it look? Heavy, tired, a bit run down, maybe a bit aged, maybe a bit bigger compared to that side there. To really, I think, see the difference. So I really hope that's helped. If you want some advice on makeup colours, drop me a message. Uh, if you haven't had dominant colour analysis for free, virtually through Messenger, then let me know. I can do that with you as soon as I'm free. And then once I know your dominant colour, I can prescribe the best shades of makeup. Any other questions, just let me know. I really hope this has been helpful. Please let me know if you have any takeaways from it. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.